Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Azana Rez Otto. Um, today I'm working on the 2014 Toyota Highlander. The customer complained that um, each time he leaves, the battery connected overnight, the battery drains. So I will show you. Two batteries presently these are two batteries this battery was bought a year ago I mean, six months ago why that one is uh, about uh, two weeks or six weeks ago so both of them were two so the customer called me to try to diagnose what the problem was now uh this is what i've discovered first of all um the customer has a faulty key he told me that he won't actually want this one change which i plan to do but i discovered that you can see the key is not actually in the lock position it's in the accessory position secondly you can hear the chime of the key unlock warning signal there's no key there you can hear the chime for example i put the ignition on you see you see you can hear the chime to remind you to remove your key but the key has not got into the lock position it simply tells you there's a key inside even when you have removed it it's still telling you that there's it's still telling you that there's a key inside now look at the this I press the remote to lock, it refuse to lock. Now this is not because I'm sitting in the car. Even when I go outside, lock, you see, it reject. Another way to tell you, it is now, reject. That is an issue already. So, first of all, the key is bad. The ignition lock is equally bad. So we are going to check and see if it's possible to work on the ignition lock and have it done. Thank you. I have been able to I have, I have lost it. I have lost this and check the ignition lock. First of all, uh, this ignition lock has not been tempered as with. So, this is your the factory one. You can see it has not been opened before. But the lock might still have problem. But I have managed to shut down to move the key to the lock position. Yeah, as, as you can see, so it's in the lock position. By the time you remove it, it's no longer beeping. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to shut down the car, then I'm going to connect my multimeter here to see uh, if there's any circuit that is draining power in the system after the car has been shut down. So I finally connected my multimeter to measure the current when the door, the car is shut. Uh, this is a 10 amp, the 10 amp range. Connected the positive, then the ground connected this. So currently, the system is drawing 0 0.5 amps. So I'll go and lock. I'll go and lock the door. You can see the door is not locked. So I'll lock it now. I'll lock it now. So it's locked. Presently, the 
zero point, it was between 0 0.51 and 0 0.52 amps. So we allow the uh, computer to go to sleep. So we come back and check this after like 30 minutes. I will see uh, which of the if and see if the current has dropped. After one hour 30 minutes, the current only dropped by approximately 0 0.11 amps. It was normally 0 0.52 to 5.51 to 5.2 amps. Now it has dropped to 0 0.45 to 4.4 amps. So this is rather too high. It's still high. So what we are going to do, we are going to pull out the fuse one after the other from the fuse bus to enable us determine uh, which of the circuits in the car is actually consuming this voltage. So we are going to start from here. A change so I will I keep doing this wherever I notice a change I will draw your attention to it wow you can see this particular circuit immediately I plug it in it goes back all the way to 0 0.6 then this particular fuse immediately I take it off you see put it back in see I'll put it back in and you watch you can see the jump back so let us try other fuses and see if we have similar issues Um, the circuit the circuit that had challenge the circuit that had challenge was this circuit this circuit was a circuit that had challenge that usually caused the drain and we will take a good look at it that circuit, as you can see, is the is the EC UB number one circuit. Now that circuit, now this is a UB circuit. It's actually responsible for a ten amp circuit. It's actually responsible for a lot of things, including the central locking system. So I discovered that um, this light usually comes on. That was why um, the door is not properly shut. So the car see that even when you still lock the ignition, it was still draining the battery. So I now have to look at the protesting switch for the driver's side. So, for the switch for the driver's side. Yeah, this switch. So this was, this switch was now replaced. So as you can see, it goes off and everything shuts down. 
so we are going to actually see if um, this has solved the problem we are still going to connect our multimeter and connect our multimeter and see if there will be no drain in the system so after rectifying the fault i've connected uh, the battery actually let me reconnect it so that you see you can see now immediately i connect you can see it's 5.4 you can see it's, it's reducing gradually so in 30 minutes time this should drop we'll come back in like 30 minutes time mind you i have not locked the car so i will do that now and i guess you will see a spike now that's locked so, we'll be back in less than 30 minutes see the voltage that actually, actually dropped so this is how it should be everything is okay and everything is okay right now so, I want to make that so uh, to actually show you that the device is connected I will press the remote the unlock button you will see the spike you can see that there's a change in voltage the door has opened and now the car is back on it has woken up from sleep so if you leave it in like 30 minutes or so everything will go down again you can actually see that the voltage that started the current has started dropping so problem solved uh, so far we have sorted out um, the device that normally drain the car battery which is the dock courtesy switch remember this particular you can remove it even in the accessory position so show you that uh, you can see you can hear the, the chime which shows that it is not properly locked it's in the accessory position and uh, we are able to remove this key so we decided to cut a new key this time and when you open the door you don't hear a chime so this can actually open and open and equally lock